Hello there fellas and ladies, welcome back to Goodfellas Garage. Today I finally got my hands on a 2020 C8 Corvette and I wanted to do this quick video. Uh, this is not going to be one of those in-depth reviews or quirks and features because God knows there are more C8 videos on YouTube than there's porn on uh, Pornhub.com but uh, this is a, a base car with only three options and uh, it's pretty hard to find uh, base C8 Corvettes. A lot of them are loaded and I got this car from uh, Prime One Motorsports. I will link all their information down below. Uh, they have had a lot of C8 Corvettes in the last couple of months. They're pretty hot right now. They're selling like hotcakes. So uh, I was finally able to catch them in between the sales and I, and I got this car real quick for, uh, for a video. So like I said before, this is a base model and it has only three options. And the options are the lemon paint, the yellow paint, the yellow painted uh, calipers, and uh, the yellow seat belts. That's it. This is a base car and the base MSRP is actually under $59,000. It's uh, the base MSRP is $58,900 with the three options that this car has. The MSRP is a little over $61,000. So uh, Chevy wasn't, uh, you know, BSing when they said that these cars are under 60 grand, but uh, you know, it's typically very difficult to find uh, base model cars from any manufacturer because you know they make their money on options so this, these cars can go all the way up to almost 100 grand in options this car is practically brand new it has 200 miles an odometer i will take it for a spin uh, later in the video but there's not much i can do with it in terms of opening it up because it is still in the braking period and it's limited to 4,000 rpm in the first 500 miles now what are my thoughts about this car uh when i first saw the C8 Corvette, the you know the images of the car. I, I have to be honest. I did not like the way this car looks, and I thought maybe when I see it in person, in my opinion might change. And again, I have to be honest here. I really don't like the way this car looks, and I just can't find a good good angle on this thing. And uh, I spoke with a lot of car guys, with a lot of you know Corvette people, and, and I feel that a lot of car enthusiasts are are scared to say that this is not a good looking car, or they they don't like the way it looks because there, you know, it, it, there's been so much hype about this vehicle uh, that you know it, there's there's a backlash. If you say something negative about a CA Corvette, oh my God, you're gonna get you know crucified. But I, I don't know for me personally I, I think it lost its Corvette identity especially when it comes to the side profile of the car and we're not talking about you know the engineering behind the car and the fact that they moved uh, the engine to the back which is a welcome change you know I, I think it should have been done a lot sooner but I, I think design wise this car just doesn't look as good as a C7 I thought that the C7 was a very good looking Corvette probably one of the best looking Corvettes of the modern era and to me personally this car uh, I just don't know something about it. It, it. it tries to look like a European exotic. Uh, there's some like Ferrari elements here, and it's just I think it lost its you know American identity. It's you know muscle car, Corvette kind of a long hood, uh, you know short back, and I think it needs to be refined. Uh, and I'm okay with the front. I'm okay with the back of the car, but the issue that I really have is the side profile because there's this beautiful line that goes in the middle of the car, and then. And then this happens. Like, what the hell is this? I, I really don't understand this this whole side scoop vent. I, I really think that they should have just went with the normal door handle and a normal scoop. It, it just to me personally, that right there just ruins the look of the car. But again, this is subjective opinions. You know, this is you know, my opinion about the the looks of the car. And uh, you know, there's a lot of people who are out there who like it, and you know, good for them. Here's the beautiful LT2. I really love uh, LS series engines. I think there's nothing out there uh, like the sound of the LS. Uh, I love the fact that they're now putting uh, red valve covers on these, and you know these engines are bulletproof. I mean, they have they have been around for so many years. The technology is really, you know, if you look back from the 50s, and you know these engines are pretty easy to work on. They're very reliable, and they are very receptive to modifications. And a lot of people out there have been wondering how is Chevy able to do. A mid-engine car, basically an exotic, I mean something that you would see in a Ferrari, Lamborghini, Pagani, etc., etc., for under $60,000. And, and the answer simply is that, you know, it's a Chevy. And you, if you look closer, you can see 
uh, you know, quality control issues you can see, panel gap issues you can see, you know, paint runs, etc., etc. And that's the way, uh, you know, they can give you a car that costs under $60,000 that has, you know, supercar looks and supercar performance. Because otherwise, it's, it's going to cost two, three hundred thousand dollars just like the, you know, the competitors. So if you can live with stuff like this, then this is a perfect car for you. And uh, what Chevy has done here is, is something truly amazing because uh, now a, an average person uh, is able to purchase a car in a, in a super, you know, supercar realm for for a very uh, reasonable price because uh, something like this, uh, you know, that's European, if, if it's in the same category with the same horsepower, you know, mid-engine, you're looking at, you know, two, three hundred thousand dollars plus. I mean, here you can buy uh, a performance car that, it, that can knock the socks off anything on the market for a price of a SUV. So I'm going to take this car on a quick spin because there's not much I can do with it. It still has 200 miles on the odometer and um, it is limited to 4,000 RPM because it's still in its uh, braking period. But uh, I just wanted to take it for a spin and see how it feels to drive a mid-engine Corvette. First impressions is that the transmission is very quick. Uh, and, and the Tremec transmissions are, you know, always uh, one of the best out there. So this dual, dual clutch transmission is pretty good. Um, it, it is a strange feeling to have the engine, the LS engine right there behind you. So it, it's pretty, uh, pretty loud and the exhaust sounds really good. Uh, the other thing that you immediately notice uh, once you get into the car, it's it's pretty claustrophobic and the visibility is really, really bad. The, the blind spots are absolutely horrible. Uh, the side mirrors are actually in your way, so uh, it, it takes some getting used to. This car is pretty wide, so uh, despite the fact that it, it looks pretty small on the outside, uh, once you get in here, uh, there's a lot of width in here, so you have to be careful when you're driving. Uh, the interior is, is very nice, the design is very nice, but you have to keep in mind this is a Chevy uh, that starts under $60,000 for, for a base car, so the materials are pretty cheap. Uh, you, you can feel the cheapness, they smell pretty cheap, they don't really feel you know, luxurious or expensive, although they try to mimic that you know fancy exotic cars, but it's just, it's just not there. And, and the steering wheel is kind of funny, you know, it, it looks like a pretzel. I really want to like tear a piece off and dip it in the sauce and eat it. Well, fellas, that's it for me for today. I hope you enjoyed this quick video. You need to subscribe to the channel and smash that like button. I need to go and do some Goodfellas stuff. Thanks for watching. Bye.